Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. Uh, we just thank God for you all showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be said that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. Listen, wherever you're tuning in and logging in from, we want you to take this opportunity to invite somebody else to come in today. So go ahead and share this with as many people. Share it to your social media platforms. Invite somebody to come in. Tag someone today. No matter what platform that you're streaming on, that you're viewing us on, text somebody. Let them know it's time for church and that we want to come together and hear the word of the Lord. So listen, on behalf um, of all of our first time visitors, first timers, if this is your first time logging in, some people may be coming in. Sometimes people sneak in just a quick peek and they leave out. Some come in in this virtual setting. Uh, we do understand that, but we do thank God for you tuning in today. So there may be somebody that's out there that we want to acknowledge you. We want to tell you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you tuning in today. And so, like I said before, I don't believe it's by chance that you're here. I believe that God has led you here to hear something that's going to help your life, that's going to enhance your life, that's going to increase you in one way, shape, fashion or form. So I want you to do this. I want you to let us know. Log in. Tell us where you're logging in from. Give us a shout out. We have people in different states. We have people in different countries that watch the messages. So we we want you to we want to know where are you logging in from? Where are you tuning in from? So that we can just give you a shout out. Just tell you thank you for tuning in. So we love and appreciate you guys. Listen, we started dealing with on last Sunday. Uh, we dealt with started with this series called The Upgrade. And so today I want to talk to you about some things. I want to I want to continue along these lines. Um, but today I want to talk to you before I give you the message. I want to do this. I want us to pray. I want us to go ahead and come together and pray. Um, there is no distance in the spirit. In other words, wherever you are, you can experience the same power, the same uh, anointing of God that, that we're experiencing here. And so we want you to tune in. We want you to lock in. We want you to be in agreement that whatever it is that you need to hear, that you'll hear it today. Whatever needs to be shared, it'll be shared today. And that God will give you a word that'll transform and that'll change your life. We're not doing this just to be doing this. This is what we're called by God to do. God called us to come into minister. God called us to come in to preach this word to his people. And so we want to do that and be faithful in doing that, be consistent in doing that and do it with power and do it with excellence. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you. For this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding. We do approach your holy written word reverently. I ask right now, even for the anointing of the teacher to teach this word with simplicity and understanding so that it can be applied in people's everyday lives in a practical and effective manner. We ask right now, we cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration to assist in this manner. Now, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the great teacher, as the great comforter, as the great counselor, one ready to give us peace. We pray that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we're expecting greater. We're expecting more. We're believing you for bigger and for better. And so we thank you that you gave us the best when you gave us Jesus and everything that comes along with him. We thank you, Father, that you we crack open the treasures of heaven and that the things that you've already freely given unto us, we begin to see those things. We begin to put them on in our lives. We begin to see those things manifested. So we just give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, y'all. We are continuing dealing um, in this series called The Upgrade. But today I want to talk to you. If I can give it a title, I'm going to just give you the title straight up. I'm going to talk about, but before I do that, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2, and I'll give you the title after um, I share this first John chapter two, verses 20 and 27, first John chapter two, verses 20 and 27. And it reads here, it says this, 
It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it have taught you, you shall abide in him. Today, I want to talk to you about an unction to function, an unction to function. When we talk about this unction to function here, it says in first John two, it says, but you have an unction from the Holy one and you know all things. But then in verse 27, it's talking about this unction. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but that same anointing teacheth you of all things and is of truth and is no lie. And even as it have taught you, you shall abide in him. When I talk about this unction of function, I'm talking about the anointing of God, the anointing of God. What is the anointing of God? The anointing of God, as we see in Isaiah 10 and 27, it gives us a description of the anointing, what the anointing can do, what it can produce. And it says in Isaiah 10, 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So the burden is going to be removed. The yoke is going to be destroyed because of the anointing. So when the anointing shows up, whatever is burdening you is removed. Whatever has yoked you, holding you captive is destroyed. And so we says that the, the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. So to give this a, a, a basic definition, the anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God is the burden removing. It's the yoke destroying power of God. In other words, it's the ability to do supernatural and extraordinary things that you could not do in and of your own ability. It's God's ability coming on your ability to do what you could not do in your own ability. God's super on our natural. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a supernatural power. It's an unseen force from God that now equips us to get things accomplished and to get things done. To now bring deliverance, to bring freedom, to bring wholeness in our lives. The anointing of God is God's power manifested in the earth. An unseen force from the spirit realm coming into this natural earth realm to now change and to rearrange things, to now put things in order, to now grant you access to certain information, to give you wisdom and insight. Now I wanna get ahead of myself, but the anointing, and we gotta understand God's anointing, how God does what he does. Now, I, I wanna show you something. Jesus needed this ability to get things done. Jesus didn't do any ministry in the earth until he was anointed by God or anointed by the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke chapter four, I want to go there. I want to go there because I'm trying to, I want to stay here with my notes, but as I, I want to begin to share some practical things, I'm giving you this stuff. I'm giving you these scriptures now to kind of get them on out, <laughs> but then I'm going to begin to just talk to you. I'm going to begin to talk to you about the anointing, what it, what it will do. I'm going to give you experiences from my own life when I've encountered this anointing. As I begin to learn about this ability, if I, as I begin to learn about the power of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And the more that you hear it, the more confidence and faith you have in this anointing and this ability to get the job done. The Bible says in Luke 4, that it says in, in Luke 4:14. 4, now, before this, Jesus is baptized by John in the River Jordan. OK, he's baptized by John in the River Jordan. The Bible says that, that when he came up out of the water, that the heavens open up and the spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted upon him. Then there was a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now, the Bible says that the spirit of God led him. So now this is the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus. 
And as the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus, the spirit of God led him into this wilderness. And after now, now we pick up after he endured the temptation, the Bible picks up here in verse 14, Luke 4, 14, and says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So when he returned in this power, his fame went about uh, upon all of the region. And then in verse 18, it comes now as Jesus enters into the city, he says he opens up the book and finds the place where it was written. And he says this, that the spirit of the Lord, verse 18, is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus was anointed, watch this, by the Holy Spirit. And now you can't separate the anointing from the Holy Spirit. Jesus now, watch this, Jesus the Christ, now, Christ wasn't Jesus' last name, but it was a description of who he is. The Christ, Christ meaning anointed one. And so you can't talk about the anointed one without talking about what he's anointed with. So now we see that if Jesus needed to be baptized in power, when I said baptized in power, if he needed to be dressed in power, to do what he needed to do, how much more do we need to be dressed in that same power to do what we need to do? And so he says, the spirit of the Lord is up on me. It's upon me. Now watch this. There was a reason why he was anointed. The reason why he was anointed, watch this, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So this is the first thing he's saying. I have this ability on me to preach to you. I have this ability on me to now watch this, to send, to heal the brokenhearted. So there's an ability, Jesus said, that's upon me to now deal with your brokenheartedness. It's to deal with the issues that you're struggling with. It's to deal with your poverty. It's to deal with your mental issues. Now, I love this. He says this, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And I like this, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So now he says this, he sent me to heal. He sent me to deliver. He sent me to recover sight to the blind, not just physical sight, but also spiritual sight. Not only for your now watch this, the anointing to come upon me to now help you to get out of the dilemma that you're in. Jesus said, I'm anointed to heal. I'm anointed to set free. I'm anointed to deliver. And watch this. This power that comes on me is not for me, but it's for you. This is going to be good because the anointing within is for strength. The anointing upon is for service. See, you're being strengthened with might, the Bible says, by his spirit in the inward man so that you can have this unction on the inside. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You have an anointing that abides in you to teach you all things. This anointing in you is the same anointing that was upon Jesus when he walked on this earth. So you and I are anointed when we get born again, the same spirit, when we receive the Holy Spirit to abide in us, the same anointing that Jesus walked in abides in us Watch this and can come up on us. And when we talked about I did this lesson years, not years ago, well, years ago and not too long, maybe about a year or so ago, when I talked about the dual working of the Holy Spirit, the spirit within and the spirit upon. The spirit within is for strength. The spirit upon is for service. So now the dual working of this anointing, this power is to strengthen you inwardly, but also to come upon you outwardly to get things accomplished and done in the earth for you to do what God called you to do. I need somebody to type this now. I need you to begin to declare that I am anointed. I am anointed. 
with the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. I want you to make that confession of your faith. So that anointing, I'm going to go back up here to um, real quick to, to deal with first John, because I didn't really, really get into that. He says, you got an unction. You got an unction. There's an unction in you from the Holy One. And watch this. And you know all things. You know all things. This unction, this anointing that abideth in you. Watch this. You know all things. And remember, you can't separate Holy Spirit from the anointing. And so when he abides in you, this anointing abides in you and you know all things and you know all things. But then in verse 27 in first John two, it says this, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie, even as it have taught you, you shall abide in him. Let's dig into this real quick. He says, watch this. You've received this anointing. This anointing abides in you. The Holy Spirit abides in you. And he says that you need not that any man teach you. So does that mean, well, I thought God put the fivefold ministry gifts for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes, he has. And our job is to teach. Our job is to train. Our job is to develop. But he says, I put something in you. I put someone in you, the Holy Spirit, with something, the anointing, the power that now will teach you. Remember, when Jesus said, when, when, um, in Isaiah, Isaiah quoted, he says, I'm going to take out of you the heart of stone, put in you the heart of flesh, put my spirit in you. I'm going to write my laws on your heart. And you will walk in them and cause you to walk in them. See, there's something inwardly. There's an anointing inwardly that teaches you in every situation what you need to do. The answer is always there. The answer is always there. The answer that you need to the dilemma that you're facing is already there. The answer is already there. The answer. You need to say that the answer is in me. The answer is in me. The wisdom is in me. Now, this, this makes me think about now in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, um, verses one and two. Ah, I want y'all to go there real quick. I, 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 I want y'all to go there real quick. The book of Isaiah. Um, chapter 11. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11. See, I. I feel like walking around. I'm walking around and preach. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> I need to. It says, and there shall come forth, verse one, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is talking about Jesus here. And this, watch this, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. See that on. Oh, that's good, man. Not just going by what you see and what you hear, but on the inside, that unction, that anointing will teach you that anointing. The spirit of wisdom will come upon you. The spirit to know wisdom is not knowledge. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge effectively. So all of the knowledge that you've acquired thus far, watch this. The anointing will assist you in knowing how to take all of that information to now construct the answers that you need for whatever situation that you're in. Sometimes it's not a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of comprehension, understanding or bringing together what you've learned to accomplish what you're trying to achieve. And that anointing that abides in you will teach you all things. So the same, watch this, the spirit of the Lord, watch this, the Holy Spirit now brings all of these facets, all of these anointings, all of these abilities, wisdom, understanding. That means your comprehension should increase. You should be able to now comprehend things that was hard for you to understand. There's an anointing for you to understand. it. The anointing is there for you to understand. And so the anointing is there. Watch this. The spirit of counsel. 
So where that you're trying to talk to somebody, it's like, man, I ain't never encountered this situation before. But the anointing that abides in you will give you the answers for the person you're talking to. Will give you answers for your own dilemma. What's the counsel of the Lord that's in your heart? Sometimes if I can get people to quietly sit and hear and says, OK, what's in you to do? What's really in you to do? And if you get still enough to hear that counsel, because the unction is there, the unction to function, the unction to live, the unction to know. And now watch this, because sometimes once you learn how to tap into this power, to tap into this wisdom, to tap into the, we're going to talk about that. It becomes almost to you, it'll seem like common sense because you're commonly walking in it or consistently walking in it, but it's not necessarily common to all that's around you because they haven't learned how to consistently walk in the power that you tapped into. Okay, this, this, this is important because the more you get into this place, whereas now you've trained yourself to hear from God, you trained yourself to follow that unction. You've trained yourself to, to submit to the wisdom that's coming upon you that now is saying this, I can't do this in and of myself, but your word declares that I got an unction from the Holy One and I know all things. See, that has to be part of your confession. This is how you activate it. See, I'm getting ahead of my steps, but I'm, I just, I'm gonna go ahead and let it rip. This is how you tap in. You speak, you speak it, you believe it. Your faith and your confidence activates this anointing. Your, your prayer time activates this anointing. Uh, when, 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 when we talk about the anointing, I, man, I'm telling you, when, when I begin to experience and encounter the anointing, my life drastically changed. It transformed my life. When I would get into the presence of God, I would get into a place of worship. I would pray in the spirit. I would put on um, ministry uh, videos or whatever that, that, that the power of God was in operation and demonstration. And I begin to now experience the same anointing that I would see on that TV screen would come upon me in my room. God would visit me in my room. The Holy spirit would come upon me. I would be in atmospheres that was conducive where God's power manifested. You ought to be comfortable with the power. You ought to be acquainted with the power. It should not be a foreign thing to you where now you now tap into God's presence, tap into his power, the Holy Spirit being your best companion, your best friend that you talk to him. I begin to talk to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and say, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. You're the one who brings all of this stuff. You're the one who brings the unction. You're the one that brings the power. You're the one that manifests this anointing and you, I'm going to make you my best friend. I'm going to talk to you just like I'm talking to a person standing right in front of me. I'm acknowledging you. And as I begin to acknowledge him, I begin to hear things. I begin to experience God's power. I begin to see things manifest in my life. And I'm telling you, when this power shows up, it will mark your life forever. You can't shake it. When you experience great anointing, great power, you listen, you don't want to settle for anything less. It's like a person who gets high the first time. And usually what people who do that when they get high the first time, they seek the next best high. They want that first experience that they had where it hit them. And so now when you experience the power, you don't want anything else. You don't want. See, if I can introduce you to him. If I can introduce you to Jesus and he introduces you to the Holy Spirit and now the Holy Spirit comes in and Jesus said the works that I do shall you do and greater works because the one who dressed me going to dress you. The one who came upon me when I was baptized comes to live in you and to dwell in you. And now watch this. You go, I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. Your body going to be my temple. I'm going to come live in you. And when I invade your heart and I invade your life, I'm going to bring this power with me. Y'all got to hear me. We have to tap into this anointing. We have to begin to walk in this. And each and every one of you that are born again and spirit filled, you have this ability in you. All of this is at your disposal. And I'm, 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 
This generation, I don't hear them talking about this enough. See, the generation before taught me in this and trained me up in this. So I was brought up in this thing. I was brought up as a teenager in the power. I was brought up as a young adult in the power. I was brought up hungry for the things of the spirit. I was seeking. I was seeking Holy Spirit for him, for intimacy with him, for him to show himself to me, to reveal intimate secrets, to reveal mysteries, to manifest these things. And all of a sudden, I began to see as I realized I had a right for these things to activate in my life. I had a right for this power to show up in my life, that it was available to me. I began to say, OK, Holy Spirit, it's me and you now. Show me what to do. Reveal things unto me. Grant me understanding. Grant me power. Come upon my physical body. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired of just reading about these supernatural works out of scripture. I want to see these things, not in order to believe, but because I believe. And to see the things that even the early church saw, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the things that begin to take place. And so now, even as, as, a, as a teenager, the word of the Lord came to me. And this guy prophesied over, over my life. He says, you're going to move in the gifts of the spirit. There's going to be the, the stirring of spirits upon your life. I'm going to give you the ability to speak into people's lives and see the things that are binding them up for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free. Man, I was hungry for God's power as a teen. like, God, use me in this manner. I asked him to use me in this manner. I wanted to see things manifested. I've seen legs grow out. I've seen arms grow out. I've seen blinded eyes open. I've seen deaf ears open. I've seen things take place. Why? Because of the hunger. The hunger that I had to see God to manifest these things in my life. And so I'm telling you. I've been exposed to this and I want you to be exposed to this. This is why part of our culture as a ministry is going to be a culture of power that now you begin to see the supernatural working of God. Sometimes many people have diminished the power of God to just stories, have diminished the power of God. And what some people are doing is they are preaching more your performance versus the, the, the ability of the Holy Spirit within you coming upon you to do what you can't do in your natural ability. And I'm telling you now, he says to talk about this. This is how the upgrade is going to come. It's not going to be by your works. It's not by your might. It's not by your power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord, because the same way Jesus found himself in the book, you need to find yourself in the book and say the same thing. The Spirit of the Lord is up on me because he hath anointed me to preach. He's anointed me to heal. He's anointed me to, to deliver. And so now watch this. You're going to have to become we have to become proficient in this power so that we can be skilled in this power. <sighs> That I'm telling you, it's time to tap into this stuff. It's time for the super to be natural in our lives. It's time for the super to be natural. It's a thing where we should be able to pick up on things. There's, there's a be a thing where we go into meetings and now where everybody is racking their brain trying to figure out the anointing of knowledge and understanding comes upon us and we see exactly what needs to be done. See, what would take years of counseling, the Holy Ghost will handle in one moment. He'll take you to the root of that thing. And now watch this and watch this because I'm anointed like Jesus to preach deliverance. When I preach, power is released. Glory to God. And I got to be confident that God, I'm not trusting in my study time. I know I got to study to make myself approved unto you, but I ain't trusting in that. I'm still trusting that after I prepare that Holy Spirit, you breathe on this thing. I need your power on this message, because if not, it'll be just another good talk. It can be a good motivational message, but I need a word that's going to go into the deep recesses and the cracks of people's souls and to heal, set free and deliver and to rip out whatever has been holding them captive in the name of Jesus for the spirit of the Lord. Glory to God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. And you've been anointed too. somebody shout I'm anointed. 
I'm anointed. I'm anointed with the burden removing yoke destroying power of God. I'm anointed to cause captives to be made free. The devil better watch out when I come into the room because whenever I come in, a person who knows who they are, it'll be like when they say, yeah, Jesus I know and Paul I know and they're going to call out your name. They're going to know you. Satan going to know you. Demons going to know you because when you come on the scene, you coming in power. You not coming timid. You not coming like a coward. You coming in boldness and the spirit of boldness going to come on you and you going to walk in that power and when everybody else running from the devil, you run into him and you casting it out on every situation that you come into in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke the spirit of fear. It will not rest upon you, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. You have it now in Jesus name. Glory to God. Glory to God. I like this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What's the gospel to the poor? What's the good news to the poor? Gospel to good news. What's the good news to a poor man? Not just you don't have to be poor no more, but the answer to his poverty or her poverty that that now watch this. I come to preach deliverance to your brokenness. Glory to God. I declare that you, you won't be broke anymore. I declare that the spirit of increase is on you, that that increase will pull you out. It's the reverse tug. The anointing will pull you out. The gravity of that curse, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law and poverty is of the law. Poverty is under the curse. Poverty was a part of the curse. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be broke. And watch this. When the anointing comes, when the spirit of increase comes, it counteracts the curse of decrease. And so now in the name of Jesus, the spirit of increase be upon you to pull you out of your poverty and for you to walk in overflowing increase in Jesus name. Now watch this. He says the recovering of, I like this, that he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, the brokenhearted for those whose hearts have been broken. Those whose hearts have been broken. Those whose hearts have been broken. I preach healing to your heart now. I declare healing to your broken heart, your bruised spirit, your broken dreams. And I declare now resurrection. I declare resurrection of that dream, resurrection of that vision. Yeah, recovery of sight to the blind, that you lost your sight. You lost your vision. You lost your dream. You ain't been dreaming the way you used to dream because of past mistakes and failures. And I now implore the spirit of the living God to infuse you once again with energy and with zeal. Even like Samson. Samson was a man who was anointed. The spirit of might was upon him. The spirit of might was upon him. And so, you know, Delilah seduced him to now tell her where the source of his strength was. But now watch this. And now he lied to her a few times, but then she found out the truth, shaved his head and his strength was gone. And the first thing they did was plucked out his eyes. They snatched his vision without a vision. God says the people perish. See, if Satan, if Satan can rob you of your vision, he just shut you down and killed you and you the walking dead. Because you have no vision, you have no direction. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that you will begin to dream and that the vision will be restored. Samson did this. Samson repented unto God. He cried out unto God and said, Lord, let your power, let that ability, that anointing come upon me again to now defeat the armies. And watch this in his final, in his final battle. When he pushed the pillars and that all of this came down upon him, the whole structure came down. The Bible says that he killed more in one day than he did in his lifetime. Why am I saying this? God is saying for those, it seems like that your vision was plucked out. That your dream had died. I'm praying for a resuscitation in your spirit and in your mind now.
and that this time around that the anointing will come upon you and that you will now in this time around in this season of your life in this moment that you will now do more than you did in your entire lifetime and the word of the Lord came that this is the year of the catch up this is the year of acceleration so I declare acceleration out of my spirit over you acceleration over this ministry and father in the name of Jesus Jesus, strengthen us. Give us that power to get the job done. Glory to God. Jehovah ba sikama. Who de bo reve di sike de 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 bro. See the anointing is available. The anointing is available. The anointing is available. What's the purpose of this this anointing? This anointing is available to come upon you to accomplish whatever you've been called and created to do. This anointing will come upon you to give you wisdom to work. This anointing will come upon you to give you the skill sets that you didn't have before the anointing came upon you. He'll teach you how to do the work. He'll put some of you in new positions of management and leadership and will grace you to know how to do it. If you ain't never done it before, he'll grace you to get the job done. He'll create a job just for you. He'll create the money to come in. God will elevate the company just to give you a raise. That's what's taking place now. God is saying, because you own the scene, that everything attached to you got to grow. Everything around you got to upgrade because he's favoring you. And because he's favoring you, everybody connected with you going to experience Experience that favor in Jesus name. Glory to God. I hope y'all receiving this. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Watch this. The book of the book of Exodus 31, the book of Exodus 31 and verses one through six. I'm going to begin to prophesy some things as I'm preaching. It may sound weird. It may, I got to do this for me right now. I got to speak life because I got to speak what I'm seeing because the enemy. Yeah, I've been there. The enemy has attacked my mind in times past. He's attacked me. Of, remember, you see, you let time go. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. Your time is up. Your season is up. And I curse that in the name of Jesus. I'm stronger than I've ever been before. I'm wiser than I've ever been before. I got more. I'm packing more than I've ever been before. And I'm telling you now, I'm coming for you, Satan. I'm coming for every territory we're to overcome and to conquer in the name of Jesus. I speak to the regions round about this area. I speak to the Tidewater regions. I speak to the Eastern Seaboard. I speak to every region and territory he called us to. And I take authority over every principality that's there. You got to get out the way because the children of the army of the Lord are coming now in power and in victory in Jesus name. Uh uh-uh. uh, you ain't shutting down this anointing. You ain't shutting down this word. You ain't shutting down the freedom that people need to hear because we are anointed to preach deliverance. We are anointed to bring recovery of sight to the blind. There are people in areas and territories and regions that they are walking in poverty. They are walking in despair. They are walking in bondage. And we coming in packing with the blessing and the anointing. And it will transform, rearrange, and change things for the better. In the name of Jesus. Who glory to God. Glory to God. People going to give us spaces to come preach in because the people needed in that area. People going to give us stuff. I'm telling you now in the name of Jesus and God is catching us up. God is going to speed it up. God is going to dump it on us and we ready to receive it now in Jesus name. Yes, God will turn our shame into triumph. He will change our crime into joy and shouts of praise. I declare it in Jesus. Jesus name victory yeah. glory to God who who Jesus for the spirit of the Lord is upon me and the spirit of the Lord is upon you this is why I tell people we ain't got time to mess around no more uh, time is of the essence and whenever you connect to now support and to run with this vision the same grace 
going to come on you. The anointing to do, to play your role in this thing going to come on you. All you got to do is be willing and available and the anointing is going to come upon you. The hand of the Lord will come upon you. Thing, I'm telling I know situations will try to come up to stop you, but I declare in Jesus name that the burden be removed and the yoke be destroyed. People better watch out how they handle and deal with you because the anointing is designed to remove burdens and destroy yokes. So people better not be a burden to you because now the anointing on you going to rem- Oh Lord Jesus. Okay. 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 Whoo, gee. Oh Lord. Okay. 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 Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, Exodus 31. Exodus. Whoo. I was going to say, y'all forgive me, but no, Lord, my God, my God, my God, my God. And the Lord spake, this is Exodus 31, verses 1 through 6. Exodus 31, 1 through 6. Uh, my time is running out. But he says here, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezaliel, the son of Uriah, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of timber, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I behold, I have given with him a Holiab and the son of a Hemsimach of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. He says, watch this. I've anointed the people around you. I've placed in them wisdom, knowing, understanding to get the job done to accomplish what I told you to do. (laughs) Exodus 35 and five, Um, 35, 35. Um, It says this, them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work. Um, Of the engraving of the cunning workmen and of the embroider in blue and in purple and scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. Exodus 36 and two. And it said in Moses called Bezaliel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man and in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. See, in whose heart the Lord put wisdom. Even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. Ooh, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to the work to do it. So those whose hearts was willing and stirred up to help and to assist. He said, I put wisdom in them. I put wisdom in the people that's coming to help you. I'm putting wisdom in all those whose heart is willing to help you. This is why some, ah, Jesus, this is why some people don't know certain things to do is because their heart isn't willing. So God didn't put the wisdom in them because they were never connected to you to begin with. So they became a hindrance versus a help. Now watch this. Numbers 11, 16 and 17. But there's a remedy to that. This is why God told me to deal with trust in relationships and the healing and the restoration and the reconnection because of people reconnect. The wisdom will come again. Okay. And the Lord said unto Moses. Numbers 11, 16 through 17. See, the Holy Ghost been guiding this thing the whole time. I just hear what he said to preach and I preach it. But then I begin to see the connections. And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, whom thou knowest. That's a whole nother thing. It's like choose elders who you know to be elders. We can only confirm what God already put in you. If you. If I call if I call you a deacon and you don't have a servant's heart, I lie on you. Because deacon means servant. See, elders are overseers. They help to oversee the flock. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. See, that's why when people are connected with you, 
God will start leading them to do stuff for you to assist you in the vision without you even asking them to. See, leaders take initiative. Managers just run systems. They are just stewards over systems that are already created. But true leaders initiate. They help create the systems. Okay, that's a whole nother leadership. Oh, Lord Jesus. Watch this. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Watch this. Oh, this is my little thing going on. This is my timer. Watch this. Um, let me let me share this real quick. Numbers. Uh, I'm saying Numbers 11, 16 through 17. Yeah, and it says, And the Lord said, Give me 70 men of elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. This is one of the reasons for this anointing It is share. See, I, it's so much I need to talk about what the anointing. The anointing is transferable. The anointing can come from one person and get on another as you position yourself properly. This is where submission comes in. When you submit, you come up under the mission. And when you come up under, now what's on the head comes down on the person that's submitted to them. The oil flows down. The oil doesn't flow from the bottom up. It flows from the head down. God said, find elders who are elders amongst the people. Find people who are already doing it. Bring them with you when you come talk to me. And when I come visit you, what's on you, I'm going to put it on them. I should not be the only one walking in this power after all this time. There should be people walking in this same grace that I'm walking in. There should be people that should be prophesying the way I'm prophesying. There should be the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits that should be moving. There is a prophetic utterance that comes out of this ministry and you should be activating in this power, the same power that I'm walking in. I should see duplications of this anointing. And now is the time we're going to see accelerated duplication. God is bringing hungry people again. Who I'm telling you. And they're going to pick up the spirit and run with it. Watch this. Whew. The anointing. The anointing. The unction to function. The unction to function. The unction to function. The unction to function. Glory to God. I'm trying to see how decided if I was going to go. I may just stop here. I'm going to stop here for right now. I just wanted to kind of wet your palate. I want you to get going. I want you to, to get ready for the supernatural to manifest. It's time to see God's goodness, God's grace, his glory manifesting like never before. We got to get ready. Somebody say, I'm anointed. <laughs> I'm anointed. 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 Burden removing, yoke destroying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Show rebasite. See, the super comes on the natural. That's why it's supernatural. It's above the norm, above the natural. But the natural is important. If the natural wasn't there, the super wouldn't have anything to come upon. See, some stuff you haven't experienced supernatural workings is because you haven't started with some of the practical things for it to come upon. 
So he says, if you start in motion, my anointing will come, will come upon you. Um, go to, I'm, uh, in the book of first Kings 18, this is one of the ways you activate this power is through prayer. It's through prayer. First Kings 18 verses 41 through 46. Now, I've preached on this for years. And it says, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, dr eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth. Watch this. And he put his face between his knees. In other words, he was in his posture of prayer. And said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he says, go up, say unto Ahab, because see in that place of prayer, he heard something. He saw something. He told his servant to go look for what he saw. And what he heard while in prayer, the servant didn't see it, but he kept telling him, go back. In other words, you stick with it till you see it. And then he says this coming down, he says, behold, there arises a little cloud, verse 44, out of the sea like a man's hand. And he says, go up, say it to Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel and the hand of the Lord was a, was on Elijah, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is what's considered a call an anthropomorphic term. In other words, it's given a natural attribute to a spiritual thing to kind of show you what is what's happening. So when we talk about the hand of the Lord, we're talking about this anointing, this power of this ability that came upon Elijah. And watch this. And it said, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. You got to see this. This anointing came upon Elijah. Ahab had a head start. You know, the king got the best horses, the best chariots, got the fastest horses, got the fastest chariots. And he had a head start on Elijah. But when the anointing came upon him, he ran a modern day flash. He ran and beat him. Can you imagine? Because see, this is the type of stuff that we have yet to see under a better covenant. Wow. The anointing only came upon certain people under old covenant and old testament to walk in their particular offices. But under this new Testament, this new covenant, see, we heading up to the day of Pentecost where we celebrate the coming of this power to not just come upon us, but to be within us where he's at our disposal 24 seven. The king had a head start. Some of you have been looking at people that have had a head start on you in life. But when this anointing comes upon you, it's going to cause the acceleration for you to catch up and even pass what they've done in a shorter amount of time. If you can believe what the word of the Lord is saying, God's saying, I will anoint you to get it done in these last days. God wants to rock your world with his blessing. In the name of Jesus, I receive this word for me and for my household. Lord, I preached to your people for years and may the same grace come upon us now to show them what you said is true. Every 
everything that's been lost, everything that's been damaged, everything that's been destroyed, I call on you, great and mighty Jehovah, to recompense sevenfold what's been damaged, destroyed, or lost from people to things, from opportunities to money. Whatever got to be replenished, I call on you. You said if the thief be found, he got to replace. Now, earth, I call forth increase now. Woo, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> People coming, they don't know why. They sense a pull. They sense a tug. They say, I got to be in Richmond, Virginia. I don't know why you lead me here, God. God, you transferring people on their jobs to get here. Whoever got to be here to help us fulfill this thing will come from the north. I call on the four winds of this earth, the four corners of this earth. Yield forth now everything. Angels, I dispatch you to go now. Bring them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Who glory. Oh, Jesus. This thing coming out of my spirit. Uh, 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 boldness and power be upon you. Mm. Acceleration and the last shall be first. And you will bring us out of a place of obscurity to a place of prominence. Father, not to make a name for ourselves, but to teach as many people as we can who they are. To bring them out of darkness into the marvelous light. And I curse every and I cancel every demonic assignment right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever wicked thing that's trying to be dragged up, it is brought to nothing now. I get ahead of it and I curse it now in Jesus name. Anything that will try to destroy our credibility, anything that will try to destroy your people from hearing what you're saying. We curse it now in Jesus name and we dispatch the power of God to flow. We declare in decree right now that eyes will be open to see and ears open to hear in the name of Jesus. Whew. Oh, glory. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Shoot. Now is the time to set season. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We receive it with thanksgiving and with praise for supernatural utterances that have been given. <clears throat> we thank you, Father, for the word of the Lord. We give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Now, if there's anybody out there today, that has made Jesus the Lord of their life. That has never made Jesus the Lord of your life. We want to give you that opportunity. Now, <clears throat> we know this. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ. He's the son of the living God, that he died for your sins. He was raised from the dead to justify you, to make you right with God. And as you accept that, he died to take care of your sin. <laughs> you don't have to do anything to take care of your own sin. Jesus did it. All you got to do is have faith and believe in what he did for you. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, I have eternal life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father for giving me your son. I'm saved now in Jesus name. Now watch this. There's an experience subsequent to salvation called the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. This anointing, this power, Holy Spirit brings it with him. 
I'm telling you, receive them. The Bible says you should receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you should be witnesses unto me. That's one of the things I didn't talk about it today, but the power of God's presence, his spirit will come upon you. Now, the Holy Spirit is a person. Third person of the Godhead. You have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says these three are one. When he comes to dwell on the inside of you, he brings this power to be an effective witness for Jesus. Whether it's through not just your words, but through your actions, through your lifestyle, through things happening in your life. That's part of being a witness for Jesus. To see the transforming power of God work in your life and now it can work in others' lives. I want you to receive the Holy Spirit. If that's you. I want you right now, right now, right now, right now to say this. Say, Holy Spirit, say, come inside me now. Say, I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance in Jesus name. Amen. Now, I want you now to open up your mouth, add voice, begin to speak. He's going to help you and assist you. Come on. Come on. If you've never prayed in the spirit, I want you to open up your mouth. Begin. You prayed this prayer. You receive him. You receive him. He's on the inside. Lebron and the Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Lebron mo kumbra, brasete kumbre frasete in the bread. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Now I want you to pray like this every day. The more you pray like this, the more fluent you become in it. And then you stir yourself up. The power of God begins to stir up in you and begins to come upon your life. And you can be that witness. You will see supernatural things take place in your life. We are praying for you. We'll believe in God with you. And we want you to connect with us so that you can get more teaching and training on this and how to now walk in this power, how to now understand what you came to receive today, what you received today, whether it's through salvation or baptism with the Holy Spirit. And also now we want to give you an opportunity to connect and join with us. If you don't have a church home and you need a church home, everybody needs a pastor. Everyone, God has placed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It's our job to help develop you, to train you in the things of God so that you can live a productive and effective life. Let us be there for you. If that's you and you don't have a place that you call home uh, and God is leading you to connect or join with this ministry, get to the place God called you. God called uh, the man of God to a certain brook and he says, there will I sustain you. And he called the ravens to come and to feed them. Wherever God calls you to be, he'll supply you. Your supply is there where his calling is. Remember that. Praise God. If that's you and you want to connect with us, just simply send us a message. It can be via our social media platforms or on. You can email us at connect at spirit of It should be coming up on your screen. Connect at spirit of and let us know. Hey, I want to connect. Or if you want to find out more information about the ministry, you can visit our website at spirit of Spiritofire.us. Um, you can, and somebody from our connect team will contact you to just share more about the ministry and answer any questions that you have. Praise God. Well, y'all, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. And so we believe that this is a very important part of the worship experience that not only do we come and we praise and we worship God through song, through the preaching of the word, but also through our gifts, our resources, our financial gifts for the work of the ministry. And so God has called us to this thing and he's called us to do this. And your financial support is vital to what God has called us to do, to begin to do more and to do greater. We're believing for greater. We're believing for more, believing for a new facility where we can do our in-person worship services. And so listen, all that you do helps to support those things. And so we thank God for your continued support. At this time, I believe it's some information that's coming up on your screen as to how you can sow, how you can give. The Bible declares this, as you give, it shall be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. And so it's important as you sow in faith, believe that God will bring increase back to your life. It's a promise, the law of reciprocity. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. So whatever the Lord is leading you to do and telling you to do, obey what the spirit of God is sharing with you. Praise God. So there's like a QR code there. You can scan it. It'll take you to a secure page where you can. sow. there are other means by which, whether it's cash app, other areas um, by which you can. sow. 
Um, we do protect your information. We don't sell it to any third parties, anything like that. We are very mindful of that and we are very protective of your information. For those that are given even via Cash App, if you would, maybe in the comments section, if you put an email address that um, we can make sure we keep track of your giving and so that when we send at the end of the year statements that at least we have a place for you um, that we can send uh, those statements to, we would greatly appreciate that as well. All right. Well, love you guys. I'm out of time, certainly not out of message. I pray that you were blessed by this today and that there was something that was shared that's a blessing to your life. So I declare and decree, may God's grace and favor be upon you mightily. May everything work together for your good. Man, man I'm telling you, I speak peace over you. I speak strength. I speak increase over you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Peace.